Hi, we are now going to learn about the acceleration of a particle that is in uniform circular motion. First, I will give you an intuitive picture of how this acceleration comes about. I will give you the formula without any proof. We will even solve problems using it. Then I will come back and redo everything rigorously step by step proving and deriving the formula for the acceleration of this particle. Okay. First we will do everything intuitively. Let us now look at this particle that is moving in the circular path with constant speed. Uniform circular motion means the speed of the particle is constant. You might be wondering if speed is constant how does it have an acceleration? Speed is constant. Velocity is not constant because the direction keeps changing. Here the velocity is pointing like that. But after some time the velocity is pointing like this, then like this, right? So the velocity direction you can see is changing, which means velocity is changing. And acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So changing velocity means the particle must have an acceleration. Now if I think about the acceleration, what is the direction of acceleration? Is it like this? Is it like this? How do I find out? Well, let us think about it. If you want to understand what produces an acceleration, what should you think about? Force. Force produces an acceleration. Okay. So I must think in terms of force. This particle has a force acting on it. Without a force acting on it, what would it have done? It would have gone in a straight line. It is not going in a straight line. It is going in a circle. So it clearly has a force. So now we want to understand what kind of force will make the velocity turn around like this. Let us concentrate on that question. What kind of force will make the velocity turn around like this? Let us now look at this particle which has a velocity in this direction. If I didn't exert a force, it will just keep moving like this. But suppose I exerted a force in this direction, same direction as the velocity. What will happen? Well, it will continue to move in a straight line. And not just that, the speed will increase. The speed will increase. When the force is in the same direction as velocity, speed increases, but there is no direction change. It keeps moving in the same direction. Okay. But suppose I exerted a force in the opposite direction to velocity. What will happen? Well, it is going to continue going up, right? Because of the velocity, it will continue going up. It will stop and then it will come back. It will still be moving in a straight line, right? It will go up and come back down. And at this instant, because of the force, the speed will start reducing. Okay? When the force is opposite in direction to the velocity, the speed decreases. And again, the object is not moving in a circular path. What are we interested in? We are looking at the object moving in uniform circular motion. That means the speed should not change, but the velocity must be turning around. Right? In both of these cases, the object moves in a straight line. I don't want that. I want to make the velocity turn without changing the speed. Hmm. So this not okay. This not okay. But what will happen if I exert a force perpendicular to the velocity? Will that do the trick? Will it make the object move in a circle? Let us explore that now. Here we have a particle with a velocity pointing in that direction. Suppose we didn't exert any force on this particle. It had no force acting on it. What will it do? Newton's first law tells us that it will move in a straight line with constant speed. Right? So it will just move in a straight line without changing its speed. Right? So that is what it will do if there was no force. But I don't want that. I want the particle to move in a circular path with constant speed. And we already know that you cannot exert a force this way or this way. That doesn't help. We are going to now exert a force perpendicular to the velocity. Let us say this way. How will the object move now? Well, if the object was at rest, then you can expect that it will move like this. But the object is not at rest. It is already moving with the velocity. Just imagine that you had a ball that was moving like that and you gave it a kick in this direction. What will it do? It will try to move that way because of the velocity, but because of the kick, it will turn. So instead of going straight up, it will go like that. 
the object doesn't move in the direction of the force but it doesn't move straight in the direction of the velocity either it tries to move in the velocity direction but because of the force it turns around like this what did i want i wanted the velocity to turn and this force has actually made it turn without proof i'm also going to tell you that when the force is perpendicular to the velocity the speed does not change same speed only thing that happens is the velocity direction changes okay this force changes the velocity's direction okay now at this point right the particle is here if i did not exert any more force what will happen well then it will just keep moving straight like that is that what you want no you want it to go around in a circle so what should you do you should make this particle turn around like that which means you must exert a force in this direction so then instead of going straight like this it will turn around exactly like what happened there similarly at this stage if i don't exert any force it will go straight but if i exert a force perpendicular to the velocity like that then instead of going straight it will turn around like this here again if i exert a force like that instead of going straight it will turn around remember instead of going straight it is turning around because of the force why is it going straight newton's first law says if there was no force it will go straight but now because of this force instead of going straight like this it is going to bend it's going to turn around like that similarly this force will make it turn around like that and this force will make it turn around like that so now notice that this particle actually moved in a circular path this particle moved in a circular path its velocity kept changing direction the velocity was always tangential and at every instant we were exerting forces pointing inwards where is it pointing it's all pointing towards the center remember this force is perpendicular to the velocity velocity is tangential what is perpendicular to the tangent radius is perpendicular to the tangent so the force is radial but radial can be outward inwards you can see that this is inwards so this force is pointing towards the center you can see from here this is the if suppose the particle was here the force is pointing towards the center from there if the particle was here the force is pointing towards the center from here the velocity is perpendicular to the force the velocity is tangential the force is radially inwards let us summarize what we have learnt okay so for uniform circular motion the force points towards the center at every instant okay at every instant it points towards the center the velocity at every instant is tangential to the circle this we already know okay and the force is always perpendicular to the velocity 90 degrees 90 degrees 90 degrees okay the force and the velocity they are perpendicular to each other the force is perpendicular to the velocity now you know that if the force is perpendicular to velocity velocity is tangential the force must be radial but it's not radially outwards it's radially inwards so we can say that the force is acting radially inwards by the way when i say force i'm talking about the net force this is the only force acting on that particle so the net force is pointing radially inwards okay but wait a minute i thought this topic was about acceleration and we're talking about force ah uh, force and acceleration they're very closely connected often people think acceleration direction is the same as the velocity direction but that's not correct that is not correct think about it suppose i drop a ball it starts moving down velocity is downwards it's moving downwards acceleration is also downwards correct acceleration and velocity match in that case but suppose i take a ball and i throw it like this velocity is this way acceleration is downwards that's why it moves like that velocity in general does not match the acceleration direction this is a fact not about circular motion this is a general fact acceleration direction is in general not the same as the velocity direction okay very few cases it will actually be the same in most cases it is not the same but newton second law guarantees that acceleration direction is always the same as the net force direction net force is mass into acceleration the direction of the net force matches the direction of the acceleration always so this is the net force you know that net force is pointing towards the center 
So what about the acceleration? Here the acceleration must point like that, there it must point like that and so on. So the acceleration is pointing towards the center at every instant. Remember it's changing direction. But here it's pointing towards the center. When the particle comes here, the acceleration direction has changed but it's still pointing towards the center. At every instant the acceleration is pointing towards the center. So then we can say that for uniform circular motion, the acceleration points towards the center. It is radially inwards. We have seen that for a particle that is in uniform circular motion, the acceleration points towards the center. It is radially inwards. Towards the center, there is a word for that. It is called centripetal. If something tries to seek the center, move towards the center, we call it centripetal. If something tries to run away from the center, we call it centrifugal. So here, the acceleration is pointing towards the center. So we call this centripetal acceleration. This acceleration is pointing towards the center. That's all. The word centripetal just simply tells you, it's like a reminder, which tells us that the acceleration is pointing towards the center. Okay. Let us now look at this object. This object is moving in a circular path of radius r. The velocity vector is tangential to the radius. The acceleration is pointing towards the center. Okay, here it is pointing towards the center. So we can say, okay, it is pointing to the left. Will it always be to the left? No, because as it moves, here it is pointing like this. Little bit to the left, a little bit downwards, right? Like that. It's always towards the center. You can't specify a nice direction saying north, south, east because these are fixed directions. Whereas the direction of the acceleration keeps changing. But it is always towards the center. So when I go here, the acceleration points like that. Notice the velocity is still tangential. This angle is 90 degrees. The acceleration is along the radius. The radius direction usually we take outwards. Okay, we take the radius direction from the center outwards. The acceleration direction on the other hand is inwards. So acceleration is centripetal. That's why we'll write it as A with a subscript C. At different positions you can see that it's always pointing towards the center. It is changing direction. That doesn't matter. But it's always pointing towards the center. Okay, that's important. Now, because it is always pointing at every instant, we can say the acceleration points towards the center at every instant, at every instant it points different, different directions, but always towards the center. Keep that in mind. Okay. The acceleration formula, because you see, what is the magnitude of the acceleration? I have not told you, I only told you the direction. I am going to now tell you the acceleration formula, how to calculate it. You know the direction already, but the magnitude I am going to give without proof. I will come back again and derive it properly. Okay. We will do that a little later because it is a little more complicated. At this point, all you need to know is what is the magnitude. So the centripetal acceleration magnitude at each instant, AC is V square by R. What is V? V, well, it is the magnitude of the velocity. So this V here represents the speed. It is at that instant the speed, speed square divided by the radius of the circle. That's it. V square by R. That is the acceleration of this particle. When the particle moves in the circle, if it moves in a big circle, because the r is in the denominator, the acceleration will be smaller. If it moves in a small circle, r is small, r will be in the denominator, so the acceleration will be bigger. If the velocity was more, then the acceleration is more. If the velocity is less, then the acceleration will be less. So the acceleration formula is v square by r. And what about the direction of the acceleration? It is always pointing from the particle's position towards the center. Remember, if the particle now comes here, the acceleration will point that way. The particle is here, the acceleration will point that way. It is not a constant direction. The direction keeps changing. But it turns out that we can use one simple idea saying that it points towards the center. Wherever it is, from there it points towards the center. Keep that in mind. Okay? Let us quickly summarize whatever we have learnt. For uniform circular motion, I keep repeating uniform circular motion because some of these things will change when we have non-uniform circular motion. This will still be valid. V square by R will still be valid. 
but there will be something extra that we will have to deal with. At this point, we are only limiting ourselves to uniform circular motion. So for uniform circular motion, the entire acceleration is centripetal acceleration and centripetal acceleration is V square by R. And what about the direction? It points towards the center radially inwards. Remember that the acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity. Velocity is tangential, acceleration is like that. It is perpendicular to the velocity and the velocity is perpendicular to the radius. So the acceleration and radius are in the same direction except when we say radius vector points outward, acceleration vector points inward. 